In this video, you're going to learn how to solve quadratic equations by factoring. Now, in order to do this, you need to use the zero product property. Um, which states that if the product of two real numbers is zero, then one or both of the numbers must be zero. So for example, if we have a times b and then that equals zero, then one of those numbers has to equal zero. So either a equals zero or b equals zero, or actually we can actually have a equals zero and b equals zero. So let's take a look at some examples. So in this one here, uh, we have the two factors already and they're formed by multiplication. So either the x minus two equals zero or the x plus seven equals zero. So I can write this as x minus two equals zero or x plus seven equals zero. So we're gonna solve each of these little equations. So x will equal two and we also have x equals negative seven. In the second one, it's a little bit different, um, but we have just a little bit of a bigger factor because it has a coefficient, but we do the same thing. So because these two factors are multiplied together, we have 2x minus 3 equals 0, or 3x plus 1 equals 0. So solving this little equation, we get 2x equals 3, and then x equals 3 over 2. The second one, we get 3x equals negative 1, and then x equals negative 1 third. So if you look, actually, we can see that the 3 over 2 actually are the constant and the coefficient. And the second one, same thing. It's the constant and the coefficient. But notice it's opposite sign. So this is minus, but this is positive. And then the second answer, it's negative, but notice that the sign in the middle was positive. And that's because you have to move that constant to the other side which changes its sign. Now the last one, it's kind of odd because it says 8x, but we can still think of this as two factors and the multiplication symbol is in the middle. So we have 8x equals zero or x minus five equals zero. So if I divide both sides by eight here, we have x equal to zero because anything zero divided by anything is still gonna be zero. And then the second equation, we have x equals 5. Now, I recommend that after you've solved, that you plug the numbers in to check to make sure that they do work. And we can see that here, 5 minus 5 is 0. And then 0 times 8 is also 0. Let's take a look at some other examples, which aren't already written nicely uh, with the multiplication already. So determine the roots of these quadratic equations. So you can see that they're not written with two factors. So what we need to do is we need to create those two factors. So we need to factor. So this is one where there's no coefficient in the front. So we want to find two numbers that multiply to 25 and add to negative 10. And that happens to be x minus 5 and x minus 5. And that equals 0. Remember, the reason that we're solving is because these all equal 0. If it didn't equal 0, then we wouldn't be solving, but just factoring. So um, here we have x minus 5 equals 0, and then another one, which I don't have to write twice. So here we can say that x is equal to 5. The second one is what we call it, remember, if you recall, this is a difference of squares. So x squared and 16 are both perfect squares. So to factor this, we get x minus 4 and x plus 4, and that equals zero. Now I'm not going to do that extra step in between anymore because I think that we can figure these out. So the first factor gives a solution of four and the second solution if we move the four to this side will give us a solution of negative four. All right now the third one here it doesn't equal zero. Remember I said that it has to equal zero in order for us to be solving. So I'm going to see if that happens which we know it does. If I move all the terms to the left side, this does equal zero, and I'm going to be solving. <coughs> so this is one where it does have a coefficient in the front, so I'm gonna do this by guessing and checking. So the factors that multiply to three are three and one, 
And the factors that multiply to negative age, I know are four and two. Now let's see, there's some kind of combination. So I can put four and two, and I do notice that this gives me six, and that gives me four. Now I do want negative two, so I want the bigger of these two numbers to be negative. So three times two, so I want this to be negative six, so we have negative six, and then plus four, and that will give me negative 2x. So this gives me the two factors, if you recall. We can write them out horizontally like that. But we should write them out side by side. So we have 3x plus 4, and this is 1, so it's going to be 1x minus 2. But you really don't need the 1 there, so I'm going to erase this 1. Okay, and that equals 0. Remember, we need to keep bringing that down. So the solution here on the first factor, imagine that we move the four to the left, sorry, four to the right. So that gives us negative four, and then we divide by three. The second factor gives us a solution of two. Okay, let's take a look at a couple more, just so that we can um, feel more comfortable with the factoring. Now number four, it doesn't, it only has two terms. So we usually think it's a difference of squares. But 8 and 5n are not difference of squares. But we do notice both of them have an n. So we're going to factor out our greatest common factor, which is n. And that leaves us with 8n minus 5. And that all multiply equals 0. So remember, every variable that we have or that we see should give us a solution. So we have one solution here with the first factor. And we have a second factor, which gives us another solution. So here we have n equals 0, and then in the second factor we have 5 divided by 8. So that gives us our two solutions. Now number 5 and 6 you can notice are a little bit different because there's fractions, and it's a little bit more difficult to factor when there's fractions. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply by the LCD, which is the lowest common denominator. In number 5 that would be 2. So if I multiply everything by 2, Remember left side and right side. I get x squared minus 2x, and then 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. On the right side, I get 0 times 2, which is 0. So everything's already on the left, so I'm going to factor. Um, there's no coefficient in the front, so this is one of those easier ones where I can open up the two brackets. And we know that this is x and x, so find two numbers that multiply to negative 8 and add to negative 2. So that would be negative 4 and positive 2. I like to put the negative first because this one's minus. If it was positive, then I would like to put the positive one first. So this gives me the two solutions of 4 for the first factor, and the second factor, I get negative 2. Okay. So the second, or the very last one here, uh, let's do the same thing. Let's get rid of our fraction. Now, in this case, our LCD is x. So I'm going to multiply everything in the left side by x and multiply everything on the right side by x. Now, when I do this, I get x times x, which is x squared. Now, when I multiply x times negative 4x, the x's cancel off. So I'm left with only negative 4 equals. On the right side, I have 3x. Now this doesn't look that great because it doesn't look like a quadratic yet. So I'm going to move the 3x to my left side and write them in descending degree order. So write all the terms in, from highest exponent to lowest. Now I can see that this is a nice, fact, uh, nice quadratic where I can factor this because there's no coefficient. So I have x and x. Two numbers that multiply to negative 4 add to negative 3 would be negative 4 and positive 1, and that gives me two solutions of 4 and negative 1. And there you have it.